This is a free preview of my course, Introduction to AWS Pen Testing. This course has 65 hands-on lessons taught by me, a real pen tester, not just an influencer. This course will take you from beginner level AWS knowledge to intermediate AWS pen testing knowledge. If you want to get a taste for the quality of my course, check out this module on Lambda enumeration, where I show you how to enumerate Lambda functions from the CLI and from Paku. If you want to see the entire course, the link is in the description of this video. Okay, now that you are able to use the AWS console to enumerate the Lambda function and find the access key and secret, I now wanna show you how to do the same thing but using the CLI and then using Paku. As I shared in the previous video, as a hacker, you need to be able to do the same job function, but in multiple different ways, because often your favorite tool or your favorite method is gonna fail you in the very moment that you need it. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this using the AWS CLI or the AWS command line interface. Now, when we launched our Cloud Goat scenario, you were provided with an access key and a secret for a user named Solus or Solus. I don't know how I'm supposed to say that. Let's go ahead and first configure these as a profile with the AWS CLI. We're gonna open up our terminal and this command should be familiar to you by now. We've used it a few different times as we've been working through this course, but we need to do AWS configure profile, whoops, Solus. It's gonna ask us for an access key ID. Let me go ahead and copy that. It's gonna ask us for our secret access key. Let me copy that. Um, yeah, that is correct. I thought I did it wrong because it looked like an actual word there in the beginning. Our default region name will be US East one and our default output, we can do JSON. Now remember when you're working with the AWS CLI, the first thing you wanna run is making sure that credentials are actually valid. Now in Linux to see who you are, it's really simple. You do who am I, but in AWS, it's more confusing. Now I told you, you would have this command memorized by the end of the course. Do you have it memorized yet? Pause the video and try to figure out who you are, run that very basic who am I command in AWS and give it a shot. All right, hopefully you tried it and you unpaused the video, but this is how you run that who am I command. You will have this memorized if you don't have it memorized now. AWS, STS, get caller identity, profile, and then solace for the user that we set up the profile as. And you can see with that, we were able to authenticate as the user we have their user ID, we have the account number for the AWS account, and we have the ARN, which includes their username. Let's go ahead and grab this and add it to our notes. I'm just gonna do an H1, and we'll say enumerating with the CLI and Paku. And we have that information right there. We'll jump back over to our terminal. Now, if you remember in the council, we went and looked at the AWS function and tried to figure out what information was in the function, the description, information like that. We can do the same thing from the AWS CLI, but first we need to figure out, hey, what functions actually exist within the account? So in the council, we just pulled it up and saw a list of functions. It's a little more difficult in the CLI, but not terribly difficult. But here's how we do that. We'll do AWS Lambda, list functions, region, US East one, and profile, solace. And you can see we have a function right here and we actually already see the environment variables. Let me grab this and we'll add it to our notes. And then I'll walk through what we see here. The first thing I want you to notice is why the AWS CLI in many ways is superior to the council. Remember with the council, if you did not specify the correct region, it would appear like there was no functions in the account. And it would be time consuming to manually go up, click, change region, check, click, change region, check, click, change region, check. Well, with AWS CLI, you can see it accepts a region flag. So one kind of extra mile exercise, if you wanna give it a shot, is you can write a very simple bash script that just goes through every single region and prints out each Lambda function. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that. It's an extra mile challenge if you wanna give it a shot, but just one way that the CLI is superior for scripting and for enumeration during a pen test. But when we run the list function, let's look at all the information we're able to retrieve. We're able to retrieve first the function name, which we also saw in the console. We're also able to receive the function ARN or the unique identifier in the AWS account. We have the runtime of Python 3.11. We have the role. 
which shows us a role is attached to it. Remember in the beginning when we were going through our slides, I talked about an execution role. That's what we see going on here. This Lambda function has a role attached to it. So one question to ask as a pen tester is what permissions does this role have? We have our handler of the Lambda handler. That's just basic default stuff. Code size, we have the description. Now this is a CTF, so not as useful to us, but in the real world descriptions might be super helpful seeing what the Lambda functions are actually used for. We have code information here, the SHA-256 hash. We have the variables. With one command, we were able to print the environment variables and find the access key and the secret right there. We have the same similar things that we saw when we were looking at the console. Nothing super useful here. We have the log group right here for any logging that's being done in the Lambda function that may or may not be helpful depending on what you are doing. Let me show you another Lambda enumeration. I mean, this CLI command already covers a lot of it for us. You don't have to click around the console. It's one command and we have access to, well, basically everything. But let me show you another command because what this doesn't do for us is it does not give us the source code. Now our source code for the cloud code scenario is rather simple, but in production environments, you might have a lot of source code to look through and you wanna be able to check out the source code. So we can actually create an S3 pre-signed URL to download the source code, which is actually pretty cool. Let me show you how we can do this. We can do AWS Lambda get function, function name, and we wanna go ahead and grab the function name right here. Profile Solace. We'll go down to the end, gives us the same information, but you can look at this. We receive this location right here. You can either curl this or just go to it in your browser, but that will download the .zip file. I already showed you how to unpackage that, but we can use that command to download the full source code for any Lambda function we are enumerating from the CLI. So then we can audit the static source code and see if there's any credentials or secrets being exposed in the source code. So that's how we do it from the AWS CLI. And now I wanna show you the fastest way and that's doing it from Paku. I've showed you Paku a few different times, but Paku is sort of like Metasploit for the cloud, Metasploit for AWS. Let's go ahead and do this with Paku. Let me get out of here. Type in Paku to open up Paku. We're gonna hit zero on our keyboard to start a new session. And we'll just call this session Solus because that's the name of the keys that we are using. Step number one in Paku is first zoom out because Paku doesn't like my small uh, terminal. And we're gonna import keys Solus. They import the keys. If we do, who am I? You can see we have the access key ID and the secret access key for the Solus user. And we want to enumerate Lambda. Remember when we were enumerating I am, we did search I am. Well, anytime you're looking at an AWS service, it's worth checking Paku if there's any functionality to enumerate that service for you. So we can just go ahead and do search Lambda. And when we do that, we have a few different things. We have some persists, which is like setting up a back door in Lambda. And we have an enumerate Lambda. Well, let's check out the enumerate command. If we do help Lambda enum, we can see what it's able to do. And I'll go ahead and take my face and move myself up so I'm not blocking the description for you. But it says this module pulls data related to Lambda functions, source called aliases, event source mappings, versions, tags, and policies, which sure does seem helpful. You can also do this. If you don't specify a region, so if we just run this with no region, it will check every single region for you and pull down all Lambda function, one command, every region, all Lambda functions, amazing, saving you a lot of time. Let's go ahead and run this. Run Lambda enum to save time, we are gonna specify the US East one region and hit enter on our keyboard. You can see this, this is how cool Paku is. It, go ahead, it enumerates it and it discovers, hey, I found two secrets for you, right? We didn't have to find it manually. Uh, Paku has a secret finder built into it that looks for potentially secret strings. And when it finds it, it prints it out to the terminal for you. So just running this command, we immediately find those two secrets. And if we wanna see more information about it, we can actually query the Paku, data, the Paku database by doing this. If we type data, Lambda, you can see we have all the information that we have before, including the download URL in order for us to download the source code. So what took a lot of clicking around in the console and took a few commands using the CLI, with Paku we run literally one command 
and it did everything for us, showing you the power of Paku. Now, if you haven't already, I want you to try that challenge lab next. I have just given you, or you found yourself, an access key ID and a secret key ID. I want you to enumerate the permissions of this access key and see if you can discover what you have access to with these keys. You don't need to take it any further beyond that, but your goal is to enumerate the keys and see what permissions you have. Give it a shot, and after that, I will give you a detailed video walkthrough showing how I would approach this lab. I'll see you over there.